the first participants are starting to join in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar in partnership with Radboud University in the Netherlands. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this event, and I'm re really glad that we are able to make this happen for you. Uh, the event is dedicated to um, get to know more about the academic offer at Radboud and of course uh, all about the student life, all about the uh, admission process and scholarships. Uh, you will have the opportunity to um, attend the Q&A uh, session at the end of this presentation and so I encourage you to leave all your questions in the Q&A box below. But before we get to that, I would like to know where you are all connecting from. So please pop your um, country of origin or residence uh, in the in the chat. And um, I am really glad to, you know, just get to know more about you all. So for those who are just connecting, hello and welcome. My name is Lavinia and I'm part of the Doc City team. Here with us tonight are uh, Stephanie Labrus from uh, Radboud University and Anna Sivova. She's uh, currently enrolled student at Radboud and I'm really glad that they uh, took the time to uh, be here with us tonight. So hello to everyone. And I see people connecting from Italy, from Colombia, Venezuela. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. So uh, for those who just joined, if you have any questions about the academic offer, uh, student life at Red Bows, or any question related to the presentation, or any questions for Anna, who is a, um, an enrolled student at Red Bows, please pop your questions in the Q&A box and we will answer them at the end of this webinar. Um, so in the meantime, I would like to also mention that for those who are um, participating uh, to this event, you have the opportunity to uh, request a certificate of attendance by Doc City. I will pop some more information about that in the chat later on. For now, I would love to leave the floor to Stephanie and to thank you uh, all once again for uh, connecting for this webinar. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, I think that uh, Lavinia already introduced me quite well, but I'll go ahead and start all over again. My name is Stephanie LaBruce. I am uh, a marketing and recruitment officer at Radboud University. Um, previously, I was also an international student at Radboud University. Um, back in 2014, I did my master's there. I'm originally from Haiti, which is in the Caribbean, uh, for those who may not know. Um, so I am both a recruitment officer and I have some sort of international student experience, even though it was quite a few years ago. Um, so today with me, I have Anna. Anna, you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Anna and I'm currently a student at Adler University. Uh, I studied business administration in a pre-master program and like next year I'm going to start a master's program there and also I'm working at Alba University with uh, Stephanie, I'm a student assistant. Yeah, so as uh, Lavinia mentioned that Anna can answer any questions that you have about student life, I will go forward with the presentation and then at the end we will have about 15 minutes to answer all of your questions. So I'll just get started. I think everyone can see my screen here. Yes, you can. Yes, good. All right. So uh, Rabat University, if you've never heard of us, we're based in the Netherlands. Um, it's the land of tulips, of bicycles, of windmill, of Heineken beer. Um, but it's also a country that has one of the top uh, worldwide universities. Most of the universities in the Netherlands, actually all the universities in the Netherlands are in the 1% of uh, universities in the world. Um, and it's also a very affordable country to study. And because we are um, such a small country, the Dutch have always had a, a culture of traveling, um, which has made uh, the Dutch very uh, tolerant and open-minded people who tend to welcome people from different cultures. So there is also a, a very big international community. And that's also one of the reasons the Dutch are very good at speaking English. Um, so you can learn Dutch if you want to come and study here, but it's not necessary. You'll hardly ever find somebody who cannot speak uh, English or at least German with you. Um, next up, uh, Rabat University is located in Nijmegen. Um, Nijmegen is, if for those who don't know, 
um, in the eastern part of the country, so we're right next to the border with Germany. Um, Amsterdam, if you wonder where that is, is on the other side, um, so towards the ocean on the western side of the country. Um, but the Netherlands is very small, so it's only about an hour and a half away. Um, so why would you choose to study in the Netherlands? Uh, a few reasons. We have excellent education, as I've mentioned, and excellent research, if that's something that you're interested in pursuing after your studies. Um, the Netherlands is also um, known for its entrepreneurial pioneers. You may know some large companies, like I've mentioned, Heineken, Shell, Philips. Uh, we have a lot of um, multinationals based in the Netherlands. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and great opportunities for work afterwards if uh, you want to stay. But also, as I mentioned, it's a very multicultural society and it's great value for money um, compared to other European countries. And some fun facts as well. Uh, the Netherlands actually is a Viking country. For those who didn't know, uh, this is actually the picture is uh, uh, the bike parking at Radboud University. Um, we have actually more bikes than people in the Netherlands. It's also one of the happiest countries in the world. And it is the number one country where English is the highest uh, as a second language. I believe that's how you phrase that. Um, now we'll dive in into the city of Nijmegen. Um, you may have never heard of Nijmegen. Nijmegen is not a very big city. There's about 100,000 people live in Nijmegen. This is our beautiful riverfront. Um, it's a very safe, medium-sized student town. Um, and it's very close to Germany, so we're about 15 minutes away from the border with Germany. Um, so why would you choose Nijmegen to come and study? It's a very lively student town. Um, we have three universities uh, in Nijmegen, um, two universities of applied sciences and Radboud University, which is a research university. Um, so we have a very big student population which makes it really, really fun for the students to live in. We have a lot of green spaces, which our students appreciate a lot. Um, quite often we hear students choose Gladbach because they, they want the city feeling without being too much in a big city um, as compared to Amsterdam or some larger cities in Europe. Um, so you still get that open feeling, even if you are in a city and there's a lot of things to do. We have a very rich cultural life. We have a lot of concert venues, a lot of parties. Of course, with Corona, um, it's a bit less uh, the last couple of years, but you know, um, it will come back. We're finally out of lockdown. We've finally gone down uh, all our restrictions <laughs> since last Friday. Um, so hopefully the cultural life can get back into it. If you enjoy going to festival parties, theaters, concerts, museums and whatnot. Um, there are a lot of great places to eat and drink and get a coffee and just sit around and watch people, for instance. Um, and it's a great hub for exploring uh, the rest of the Netherlands, but also the rest of Europe. Um, because of our location, you're very close to uh, some cities in Germany, such as Dusseldorf and Cologne. Um, we're very close to, to Belgium, if you just want to quickly pop there. And as I mentioned, it's only about an hour and a half away from Amsterdam. There's a direct train to the airport and to Amsterdam city center. And it's very easy to get around with a bicycle, which is the main mode of travel for Dutch people. Um, and our international students embrace this as well. Um, so if you want to study in the Netherlands, you will most likely learn to ride a bike. Uh, some choose not to, but it's part of the adventure. Um, so you can get a secondhand bicycle. We do buy a secondhand because, um, bikes are, uh, very frequently stolen, unfortunately. Um, so we don't, uh, if you're going to park your bike outside, most students just get a secondhand bicycle. Um, we have a citywide bus network, so it's easy to get around if you don't want to bike. Um, we even have a bus from our campus into Germany, which is into a small town close to the border, because we do have some students who live in Germany and study at Radboud. Um, We also, this is our Nijmegen city, uh, the central station that you see on the picture. Uh, there are trains that connect with other cities um, in the Netherlands, and also you can go further with the, with the train to Paris or Antwerp, uh, for instance. And we also have the Flix bus, which uh, our students actually really enjoy taking because it's very cheap. If you want to travel around Europe, you can take a Flix bus. 
Um, now we'll dive deeper into Radboud University um, and what Radboud University can offer you. So this is our university. There are very modern and very sustainable uh, faculty buildings. We have uh, great lecture rooms, libraries, self-study areas, um, and a lot of places to eat and drink. Um, we have great IT facilities and some very high-tech laboratories. I believe the one you're looking at now is one of our science. Uh, um, our science is a high-field magnetic uh, laboratory called Scott Felix, um, if you're into a degree in science. And here you have a picture of our very green campus. So like I said, Nijmegen is a green city, but uh, Radboud is also a very green campus. Um, it's actually quite unique in the Netherlands. We are one of two universities that offer a camp that have a campus university. So unlike other ones where it would be scattered buildings uh, around the city, uh, such as I think the U University of Amsterdam or in Utrecht, um, Radboud actually has one square kilometer campus where all our buildings are located. It's about 10 minute bike ride from the city center. Um, and we try to cultivate a lot of green areas around our buildings. Um, we actually have an ambition to become a very sustainable campus. So um, any new buildings are uh, energy neutral. Uh, we try to uh, be very uh, friendly to the environment. Um, yeah, and so we actually made a pledge this year to uh, become a sustainable university, to put it forward and to include it in all our curriculums and to offer courses to our students on sustainability, if that's something that you're interested. And we have a big international community. Um, we like to reinforce this community spirit. Um, of course, you want to get to know net Dutch people, but we also have over 100 different uh, nationalities on campus. So you can actually get to know people from all around the world. Um, one in nine uh, students at our university is international. And actually one in five of our first year students is actually an international student. So the numbers are growing. Um, we ha also have a great international community of um, of uh, lecturers and researchers, um, PhD students. Uh, so you will always find different cultures on campus and uh, different uh, languages being spoken. We also offer international student organizations so student can, students can get in contact with each other. Um, now at Radboud, we also value the personal approach to teaching. So we want to give quality connection and personal contract contact at the central of uh, at, at the center of our educational vision. Um, one thing that I really appreciated as a student um, and that I hear other students still today uh, they mention is how great and it is to get in how easy it is to get in touch with professors. Um, so professors are often called here by the first name, which is maybe quite uncommon for a lot of uh, students from around the world. And it's very easy to talk to them before lectures, after lectures, between, uh, between lecture hours. Um, so they enjoy that personal contact and they very much appreciate it. Another thing about Radboud University is that we are a research university and we try to integrate um, research into our teaching. Um, all of our professors uh, are actually researchers at the same time. Um, and we do value interdisciplinary research. So we, we want to promote that we, that our researchers, but also our students, that they try to work not just in their faculty and not just in their field, but across different fields. Um, we think that improves research. And, um, we have some great like world-class um, research institutes on campus. For instance, at the Donders Institute for Brain Cognition and Behavior, if you're into things like uh, linguistics or uh, cognitive neuroscience, behavioral sciences, uh, as I mentioned, the High Field Magnet Laboratory. We also have the Max Planck Institute for Psycholinguistics. Um, these are uh, world-renowned institutes that are right on our campus. And also, did you know that Radboud has been voted the best traditional university in the Netherlands eight times since 2012? I believe we only got second place twice. <laughs> this year, we are second place in 2022. Uh, last year, we were uh, best traditional university. Um, and also, uh, we ranked 101 in the Shanghai rankings. 
We ranked 24th in the, the Times Higher Education Teaching Rankings and 139th in the World University Rankings and 220th in the QS Rankings. So um, this, this does put Ladbaud in the top 1% of, of universities worldwide. worldwide. In addition to that, we've also had researchers who've been awarded a Nobel Prize. Um, we have uh, multiple researchers who get grants, um, 880 grants actually awarded to our uh, researchers by the European Research Co Council. And if you're not so into that, <laughs> we'll talk about our programs, which I think is the more interesting part of this presentation. I personally am an international marketing recruitment officer for the Nijmegen School of Management. So the Nijmegen School of Management is um, the management faculty of our university. Um, it's just a, a different name, but actually it's part of Radboud University. Uh, and we offer a total of eight different uh, English taught programs, two bachelor's programs and six master's programs. Um, and you can do these completely in English. Um, they're on the screen here, but just uh, to summarize in business administration and economics and business economics. And then we have master's also in business administration in economics, environment and society studies, human geography, political science and spatial planning. Um, and each master's program actually has different specializations. So depending on what you want to specialize in, for instance, if you want to do marketing in your business administration, you can specialize in marketing. In economics, if you want to do more accounting, you can do accounting. Um, so it depends. Uh, you can check out all the specialization from specializations from all our programs because there's quite a bit of them. Um, so you can just pick an area that you want to focus on. my next slide there we go but of course we other we have six other faculties uh, aside from the, from the management faculties so we also offer a broad range of programs so you'll find something that you're interested in the only programs that we don't offer at Harvard University are engineering and agriculture um, so if you're into that field we don't have programs for that but we do have programs in other universities in the Netherlands that offer that engineering you'll find at um, mostly at technical universities and agriculture. We have a university close to ours, Wageningen, which is actually number one in the world uh, for uh, studying agriculture if you are interested in that field. Otherwise, you can do anything from artificial intelligence to history, um, molecular life sciences, computing science, psychology, um, whatever your interest is, you'll find a program that suits you. Now, to get to the most important information, if you want to study at Harvard University, how do you get in? Um, so first of all, if you want to study a bachelor's, you would have to have an, a high school diploma, and this high school diploma needs to be equivalent to a Dutch high school diploma. Um, how do you know that? Uh, you can do a very handy e-check that, we'll that we have. I'll put it in the chat if you are interested in a, in a bachelor's. Then you can find the link to our e-check in the, in the chat. And um, you can see if your diploma is valid, um, but they will be assessed individually. So once you send in your, your application, the admissions office will uh, see if uh, your application is, um, if your previous education is equivalent to a Dutch diploma. You also have to have proof of English uh, language um, proficiency. So if you don't come from an English speaking country, or if you have not uh, received, for instance, an English education with a certificate, then you will need to do a language test, such as a TOEFL, uh, IELTS, or Cambridge test. Those are the three tests that we um, that we uh, accept at Hotbound. Um, The minimum requirements for that test is for the for the IELTS it's a six, for the TOEFL it's an eighty, and for the Cambridge it has to be C or higher. Um, this is for the bachelor's programs. And then each program has specific requirements. Um, so the requirements will be listed on the program itself. So it could be, for instance, uh, special courses in math or um, 
uh, depending on what you're going to study. I, I know that science it's programs, business programs, they do ask for some extra math courses or some extra tests, uh, depending. So what you generally do is you will send a list of all the courses that you've taken um, and then they can be assessed. So quickly, I'll move on to the master's programs. We have 35 um, masters, English master's programs. I won't list them all, but you can see the fields that we have here, um, business and economics, computer science, humanities, medical sciences, law, planning and human geography, public administration and political science, science, pure science, and social and behavioral sciences. Somebody quickly asked in the chat if we have computing sciences, we do, um, as a bachelor's degree and as a master's degree as well. So you will find something that's interesting to you. And as mentioned, every uh, master's program offers specializations in that degree. So if you're interested in arts and culture, you will find different specializations in arts and culture. If uh, it's at my faculty, at management faculty, you will find different specializations for business or uh, spatial planning or environmental sciences. Now, admissions to our master's degree, you have to have the minimum of a bachelor's degree and this bachelor's degree has to be equivalent to a Dutch research university bachelor's. So that is different from an applied sciences bachelor's. So it could be that your bachelor's degree from your university is not equivalent to a research bachelor's. Um, so that's something that you need to check. They are assessed on an ind individual basis by the admissions office. Um, you have to also meet the language requirements. Um, as mentioned, it's the same for um, the, the same tests that are accepted for the bachelors. However, some master's program might have higher um, a minimum scores that they ask. So you have to check which masters you want to do and you can see what the minimum scores are. Um, and then we have program specific requirements. So for instance, you might be required to take a GMAT test um, in order to get access to um, the programs at, at the Naomi School of Management. And also we offer pre-masters programs. If you're wondering what a pre-master is, it's actually a program, uh, generally it lasts about a year to prepare you for, for a master's program. So Anna, who will be doing our, uh, helping with the Q&A at the end, uh, she is doing a pre-masters program in business administration. So when do you get uh, admitted into a, a pre-masters? It's actually, you apply for your masters, the admission uh, office will determine if your degree is sufficient, if they think that your background is not sufficient to get direct admission into a master's program, then you will be admitted into a pre-master's. So you can't apply for the pre-master's directly. And um, at the NIMA School of Management, all programs offer pre-masters. However, at other faculties, not all the programs have pre-masters. So you have to check whether the program you're interested in has a pre-masters. Um, and uh, then it's determined afterwards whether you're admitted into it. And oh, that's one good thing to note about the pre-masters is like once you are, you finish your pre-masters, uh, you get direct admissions into the master's. So you don't have to apply again. So you complete the program, you're directly in. Um, so, we also, I've talked about lectures. Of course, you get lectures. That's what you expect of a university, but there's a lot of other things aside from lectures. So we usually generally say if you have two hours of lectures, that is four hours of a working group per course. So uh, that's a total of six hours. Um, we have a lot of interactive teaching. So we have great lecture halls, but then you get a lot of like work groups, small groups where you discuss things. Um, uh, more in a more personal way with some le with lecturers or teacher teachers assistants. Um, in these groups, we do value student input and feedback. Also in lectures, just the lecture halls are, are bigger, so it's harder to interact with everyone. Um, and you get your say in everything. So in the Netherlands, we don't really have a very hierarchical society, and that is also reflected in education. So um, you you have everyone is allowed to voice their opinions uh, during class, so that's that's great. Um, you get to develop your soft skills, 
And uh, we also ha have some study advisors um, if you need help with different aspects of your, of your education. Um, and one great thing about uh, Rabat, which was new for me, because um, I did my bachelor's in Canada, for instance, is that you get something called a reset. So if you you don't pass your exam on your first try, you can reset your exam in the same academic year. Um, so you get a second try uh, and you don't have to do the course all over again. So you don't have to do another semester of retaking the same course if you can pass it on the second try. Now, if you're interested in applying at Radboud University, after all I have said about our programs, uh, you can do this in study link. Um, this will be listed on our website once I guess that you guys, if you're interested, you will go and look at the different programs specifically on the website. Um, study link is the, it's the Dutch system for application to universities, so every university has to use study link. Um, so first you have to apply via study link. Um, that, to the program you're interested in, then you receive an email from us to upload your documents to OSIRIS. And OSIRIS is our application system, and it will list exactly which documents you need to submit. And then you have a specific time frame, which I believe is about 56 days between the day that you applied in study link and the day that you complete a full, uh, that you submit your full application um, to submit all the documents. Um, but of course, there are deadlines to uh, applying. So even um, if you apply, you don't have 56 days from any moment that you apply. Um, you do have to meet the application deadlines. For non-EU students, this is 1st of April, so it's in about a month. Um, for EU students, we, uh, we advise that students apply before the 1st of May because we, offer, we can then offer them accommodation assistance, so basically housing assistance if you want to find housing in the Netherlands, which is something that I will touch up again on a bit later. And if you uh, don't need housing assistance, you do have until 1st of July as an EU student uh, to apply. Now, talking about something very important, the financial side of things, because of course, um, going to university costs money. Um, our tuition fees for our bachelor's programs for EU students is 2,209 euros. This is um, the legal tuition fee, as it's called. This is set by the government uh, for all EU students. Um, for bachelor's students, the first year of your bachelor's is, is half price. So then you'll only pay half of 2,209 and the other two years you'll pay the full price. For non-EU students, you pay what is called an institutional tuition fee. So the price of the set by the university, which ranges depending on which program you want to study between 11,500 and 15,000 euros for a year. For the masters, the uh, legal tuition fee is the same for EU students. And for non-EU students, it does range from 11,500 to 22,000. I, I do believe only a couple of our programs are 22,000. Most of them are between 11 and 16,000 euros. But of course, studying um, abroad is more than just paying tuition fee. It also costs money to live abroad. <laughs> and uh, so you have to also think about other expenses. And I, the numbers here are, are per year. So um, for instance, your accommodation, which would be your room, apartment. Uh, this is approximate prices, so they can be a bit higher, a bit lower, depending on your preferences. Um, your living expenses, such as food, clothes, um, anything that you need for your basic needs. Um, you have to also think about a thousand euros a year in study books and materials. University books are expensive, unfortunately. And also think about 500 euros for your health and liability insurance, which is, um, are required as an international student to get health insurance um, in the Netherlands. Um, now, I wanted to start with the other one first, but for EU and EA students, we uh, the Dutch government also offers a study grant. So um, how do you get the study grant? You can apply for it. You can see the website here is called duo, duo.nl. Um, you can get it if you work uh, 56 hours a month, so it's quite a lot, a lot of hours, um, uh, or you lived in the Netherlands for more than five years, since I guess most of you don't, um, you would have to work quite a lot of hours, um, so that's something that you should take into consideration and how that would work with your uh, school. 
Um, and then we also offer scholarships. Unfortunately, we don't offer scholarships for bachelor's programs. We only offer scholarships for master's students. So if you're interested in one of our master's programs, you can go to our website, ru.nl slash scholarships to get a list of all the scholarships. We have Radboud scholarships, um, such as the Radboud Encouragement Scholarship, the Radboud Scholarship Program. Um, those are two scholarships. One is partial and the other one is full. Um, some scholarships that we offer, for instance, they won't necessarily be full scholarships, mostly for non-EU students. They will just reduce your tuition fee to the EU price. So you'll pay the 2,209 euros in, instead of the full uh, institutional fee. Um, then we have some external scholarships. A couple of them, for instance, are offered by the um, Dutch government. Um, by the uh, uh, NESO or study, study in Holland office. So that would be the Orange Tulip Scholarship um, and the STUNED, I think, Scholarship, Study in the Netherlands Scholarship. Um, they're all listed on our website. And then you have quite a number of faculty scholarships also. If you are interested in medical sciences, for instance, the medical science faculty has a specific scholarship. The uh, theology faculty has a specific scholarship as well. Um, and then we have also listed quite a lot of external scholarships um, that are offered by uh, government, uh, government entities, um, Google, the Soros Foundation, whatever you can, um, uh, that we think would benefit our students, we've listed on this web page. Um, there's also the Dutch loan system. This is only open to EU uh, students. Um, or EEA students, so that means also Swiss nationals, um, then um, those students can get a loan for the amount of their tuition fee. So that's also on the DUO website, duo.nl. You can get more information about how to apply for study finance. And now um, changing your living environment, moving to another country, uh, changing your education level, uh, it's a challenge. We understand that and we are here to help. Um, and we can help you in different ways. Before you arrive at the university, if you are a non-EU student, the university will take care of your visa application. So this is done um, during your application process. Uh, once you're admitted, um, they will ask you for all the documents that they need and apply for the visa on your behalf. So that's really, um, you don't have to fuss too much uh, with that. Um, the university offers housing assistance, as I've mentioned before, it's offered to EU non-EU students and it's offered to EU students that uh, apply before the 1st of May deadline. Uh, we do encourage all our students to uh, ask for housing assistance. Um, it could be that you want to look for things on your own, you think you can find cheaper prices on your own. Actually, the Netherlands has a, a bit of a housing crisis these days. Um, it's been going on for the last couple of years, and it's extremely difficult to find housing, especially when you're not in the country, um, because there is a bit of a housing shortage at the moment. So it, we highly recommend that you take uh, the assistance that the university offers you. Um, the way that it works is that you will uh, ask for it during your application process. And once you are admitted, the university will make you an offer you get a voucher and you can get a pick between different housing. Um, we do recommend that you act quickly on this because um, you only get two weeks to use this voucher, then it expires, but also um, other students receive their vouchers and then they get to pick the nicest rooms before you do. So um, if you want the most choice, you do need to act quickly. Um, and then we also offer an airport welcome uh, at the Amsterdam Schiphol Airport uh, during a specific time frame that most of the students come within the, a few, uh, uh, you know, set number of days um, right before the orientation week. Um, and then we have an airport welcome team and then they help you with buying your train tickets to go to Nijmegen um, and you'll see them in their red about hoodies. Um, we have not done this with Corona because of restrictions in the last couple of years, but we are really looking forward to doing it again because it's very fun to uh, meet the new students as they come in. Um, during your study, we have quite a number of ways that the university can assist you. I've mentioned student uh, study, study advisors before, um, but we also offer uh, mentoring, uh, tutoring. Uh, we also have trainers. We also have uh, campus psychologists and um, uh, 
any sort of mental health services that students would uh, require as well. And then, of course, there is more to university life than just studying. Um, student life is also social life. Um, and uh, this is something that we take quite seriously, even on the fun side. Um, this picture, for instance, is at our uh, yearly festival that's called Radboud Rocks. It's uh, celebrated on the university's birthday every year. Of course, with Corona, did not, ha did not happen. Um, but it's really fun. Um, some groups are invited to play some music um, and students and staff are invited to join. Um, so I've mentioned the orientation week. The orientation week is pretty much your first social outing with Radboud University. It happens in the third week of August, or uh, right before classes start. And it's a way for you to get to know the campus and the city. So you'll have a group um, that you'll be part of. You'll have a group mentor, generally, who is a current student. Um, it's a mix of Dutch and international students. And it's a great way to make friends. It's, of course, not required. But we do highly recommend that students take part because you do all sorts of activities during the whole week. Um, so you can learn a bit more about the university. Uh, learn a bit more about the city, um, buy your first bike, for instance, um, and everything in between. This is, I think, one of the markets that we have uh, full of really fun activities for students and all the different student organizations and associations come there. So you can also shop around which group you want to join if you're in interested in extracurricular activities. Um, big part of student life uh, is our Radboud Sports Center. It's very highly rated with our students. Um, it's actually rated number one sports center in Europe uh, just a few years ago by a student survey. Um, we offer more than 80 sports on campus, uh, indoor, outdoor, um, but also if you're just into pure fitness, we have that as well, different classes, um, depending on what you want to do from you know kettlebell workouts to dancing. Um, I think they also even offer courses that are not necessarily sports. So if you want to do, say, a photography course or something like that, you can also take that at Sports Center. It's uh, it's really fun and it's really cheap. You pay 100 euros um, as a student and you can go anytime all year. Um, and as mentioned, we also have a lot of student associations um, and student organizations. So. Those are two different things. You have study associations for your studies. So you can be in a group with all the different students that study your specific uh, program um, and they organize all sorts of events specifically for that program or they organize it with different students from different programs uh, within the faculty. But then you ha also have organizations um, such as uh, you know uh, the Model UN or Amnesty or if you're into something else like uh, veganism, there's a vegan student organization. Um, if you're into theater or debate or music, um, anything really, uh, you, can, you can find an organization to join. It can be study related or not. And you can also join your student board. Um, so you can uh, play part in uh, university politics, for instance, if that's something that interests you. Um, working as a student, I think a couple of people had already asked questions about that. Uh, it's a question that comes up quite a lot. Can students work during their studies in the ne Netherlands? The answer is yes and no. It depends. Um, it's um, for non-EU students, you will need a work permit to work uh, in the Netherlands. EU students, you can work freely. Um, Non-EU students will have a um, max of 16 hours that they can work a week. So let's say two full working days. Um, the reason is, is that the purpose of your visa is to come and study and uh, work is secondary. So it should always, the priority should always be on your studies. And that's something that we also say to all students. We do actually don't recommend, especially for bachelor students to work in your first year um, because it's quite an adjustment. Um, it's a new country, it's a new educational system, it's a new way of working. Um, it's it's quite over. It can be quite overwhelming if you also have to do a job on top of it. So uh, we do tell students to just try to have an adjustment period before you go straight into looking for a job. Um, knowing some Dutch is useful. It's not necessary depending on the work that you want to do, um, but it is useful. For instance, if you want to work in a cafe or a restaurant or something like that, it's new, knowing some phrases and understanding some words is useful. Actually. 
the university offers free social Dutch courses uh, to our international students. So if you want to learn some conversational Dutch, you can sign up at our language center um, when you're enrolled as a student and you get that for free. Um, and then we have what we call our campus data sharing office. And it's pretty much our campus employment office and they will post jobs on their website uh, for students and um, you can apply for uh, one of the jobs on campus. Um, so for instance, Anna, you can ask her about her job. She works as a student assistant at management faculty um, and non-EU, I think also. So uh, in that case, the university applies for your study, per, uh, your work permit for you if you're a non-EU student. And so I give I gave you quite a lot of information, but if I could sum it up, uh, five reasons that you should choose to study at Harvard University. Number one, we are our best traditional university. What is a traditional university? It's just broad classical university with a lot of faculties and different types of programs. That's why it's called traditional in the traditional sense of the word university. Um, we've been voted the most uh, times uh, number one um, from any Dutch university. We have a very wide range of study options in English. Um, you get a worldwide recognized diploma. So regardless of where you wanna work in the world, the Dutch educational system is very highly uh, uh, quoted or very regarded very highly. So you can get employed anywhere. Um, Radboud has a very personal approach to teaching. So you don't feel like you're just big part of this big organization. You're just another number. No, there's a lot of care taken into um, priding ourselves in, in that personal contact with our students. And we have excellent services and facilities. We're constantly renewing these as well. Um, we actually just got a new building uh, last year, completely energy neutral. Um, and we are working on the next phases. So um, the campus is always modernizing and, um, and it's a really nice place to study and work from my point of view. Um, and, and if after you get all the information, you want to still have questions well, after our Q&A, or you want to know more, you just want to get in touch with us, or you just want to stay in touch, you can contact us. Um, so the first link that's on the screen now, you can sign up for our newsletter. We send a newsletter every month uh, with just uh, some important dates, events that we're participating in, but you can also read student blogs. Uh, we make some vlogs. Um, and um, all those things we send out every month in our newsletter. You can send us an email at studyinformation at ru.nl. Any questions that you have. But we also have some Facebook, Facebook page, YouTube, Instagram. We also have a TikTok. It's not there. Um, so if you just want to see what is student life like at Radboud, you can just explore our social media. Um, a lot of it is posted by our students, so it makes it very uh, personal. Um, and of course, you can also join our events. We have quite a lot of events uh, throughout the year um, for students that are far away, international students, the event, the uh, online events are most interesting. We have a virtual open day, actually for master's students, this is happening next Tuesday. So if you're very eager, you can sign up for this one. Um, for bachelors, uh, we have an open day on campus at the end of the month on the 26th of March. And then the next, um, the next virtual open day will be in April the 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. We host webinars, um, also quite a lot of webinars. Um, so you can pick and choose. We have subject webinars, but also general introductions. Um, we do these per country as well. So if you want to have a webinar in your native language, you probably can find one on our website. Um, you can join us for a virtual fair. Or if you're interested in um, deep diving into a specific program, we do offer what we call an experience day or a student for a day. We do these for masters as well, the student for a day. And um, what this says is that we will pair you up with a student um, and then you have, you can just spend their day with them and see what it's like uh, to be a student at Radboud. And if it's done internationally, you'll probably just have some one-on-one um, -on -one Zoom sessions, uh, attend a mock lecture or attend lectures with them as well. So it can give you an idea of what uh, student life is like. Um, that's about it and we're right on time. Yes, you are, Stephanie, and thank you so much for the very interesting and thorough presentation. Uh, before we head in the, into the Q&A uh, session, I would like to ask Anna if maybe she can tell us uh, something about her experience as a, as a current student at uh, Radboud. 
Oh, okay. Actually, I can tell a lot, but there was a very good advice from Stephanie to accept the help with accommodation from the university, because I think I, I was looking for a place for my own for like four months from another country, and I couldn't get anything. So university really helps. So you should definitely take this. That's like the number one tip. <laughs> That's a great tip, I think. And maybe Anna, you can tell us about your typical day at Radboud. Um, yeah, it actually differs a lot because of the restrictions, they change sometimes, but usually I have uh, maybe like three, four uh, lectures on campus per week and like a couple of working groups. Um, um, what can I tell? It actually depends a lot on the courses because sometimes you have more classes, sometimes you, you have just more individual work that you do at home. Um, yeah, I don't know. It really differs, but it's not that busy being on campus all the time. It's a lot of individual work. Do you enjoy um, any clubs, any activities besides taking classes? Um, yeah, uh, I joined the Radboud Sports Center, but I'm only going to the fitness area and not any other classes. Maybe I'll think of joining something. I'm not, I don't know. And also, I've joined some events from the ESN Studio Organization. It's International Student Student ESN. Network, yeah. Student Network, <laughs> yeah, sure. And they organized some, some trips around the Netherlands and just some meetings and catch-ups. That's great. I think we are ready to, to head into our Q&A session. I took some notes because some of the questions we got through the chat. So if you still have questions and I see some people have their hands raised, just write them in the Q&A box and we will do our best to answer them all. So I'll start with the questions in the chat first. Um, specifically, a uh, participant is asking um, if completed masters and bachelors uh, in English uh, are enough as a, a proof of proficiency. Um, yes, if you completed a, a, your degree in English, then it's it would be enough, yes. Okay, but that's actually, great. I, okay. I have a comment. It's not enough. It should be completed in English in the European countries. Or in mm. the that's true. Yes, correct. You're very thank, right. thank you for the yes. detail, Anna. Um, so another participant is asking uh, if the TOEFL score um, can be specified. So what's the TOEFL score uh, needed to apply for any master? Uh, that will depend on the specific masters. Uh, generally, our minimum will be 80, um, but that will uh, some programs will have a higher requirement. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And I see some um, general questions about financial help and scholarships. So maybe Stephanie, we can go over that uh, topic again mm -hmm. in case any of our participants missed some important information. Uh, yes, so we do offer some scholarships for master's students. So we don't have scholarships for bachelor's students. Um, I will put the link to our scholarships in the chat. I think that might help students explore all the different options. Um, Radboud has a few of its own scholarships. Um, they are usually for non-EU EA students. Um, and then we also have some external scholarships, um, such as the Holland Scholarship Program, the Orange, Tu uh, Orange, Orange Tulip Scholarship. Um, these will be scholarships for um, by the Dutch government. Um, you have faculty scholarships, depending on what you want to do, for instance, our uh, philosophy or theology scholarships, uh, medical science scholarships. Um, I'll put it right here, then you can explore the whole list. Um, there's quite a lot of them. Uh, so you have to look which one uh, applies to you. And then, of course, we have study finance um, for EU students that they can apply via the Dutch government. Thank you so much, Stephanie. So I will go on with the questions. Um, a participant is asking if being from uh, Ukraine, a computer science student, they can apply as a transfer student. Um, to transfer, um, that I'm, I'm sure you can do an exchange. I'm not sure how the transfers work, to be very honest, but that's something that you can email the admissions office about. Um, and that's admissions at ru.nl. If you want to transfer permanently, um, it has to be equivalent to um, to the degree in the Netherlands. So whether you're Ukrainian bachelor's is the same as a 
you said you were doing a bachelor's, right? Um, if your Ukrainian bachelor's is the same as a Dutch bachelor's, um, otherwise it might not be possible. Um, and if you want to be an exchange student, you can also um, contact the exchange admissions um, to get more information about that. And that's exchange admissions at ru.nl. Thank you so much, Stephanie. So of course, participants can find all the uh, relevant emails in the chat. So please take note of those. Of course, you will have also the re recording of this presentation. So if you miss any important information, you can review that later. Um, in the meantime, a uh, participant is asking, what is the average class size? Oh, that, that, that differs greatly. <laughs> um, that will depend on your program and the size of your program. Um, so you will, you will have lectures with like two, 300 students and also the years that you're in. So say if you're in a program such as psychology, which is one of our very popular programs, um, you will have lecture halls with uh, hundreds of students. Um, if you're in a smaller program, um, then your classes will be smaller. Um, I can speak from my personal experience. When I did my master's, we were always about 25 students in a classroom. Um, Anna, I don't know how you experienced that. Um, I know. I think the master's classes are really small, like about 25, 30 yeah. people, but bachelor's, it really differs. Yeah, it depends how big the program is. So uh, popular programs will have large, large lecture, class, lecture halls and smaller programs will be smaller groups, but every program has work groups. So you'll always have a small class as well. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh, participant is asking if, as an international student, they would be able to work at the university. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes. Uh, Anna, I'm I'm proof of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm an international student. I'm working at the university. And since I'm not from the EU, I have a limit of 16 hours per week that I can work. Yeah. And the university had to apply for a work permit for me, but it took like a month to, yeah. to get it. And it. Okay, that's yeah. great news. Stephanie? So we employ quite a lot of students on campus. Um, uh, for international recruitment, we, we employ international students. We focus on that. So every different department will employ student assistants. Um, but you can also uh, apply to work as a teacher's assistant. That, that's also a some popular job for so, some students. Um, and then you can also uh, work in lab assistant if you want. Um, and then we have things that require less, um, what do you call it, less specific hours. So we also employ student ambassadors um, to do various uh, jobs. If you want to give a campus tour or it's very flexible hours. If you want to work on a social media account and post about your life, um, things like that. Uh, but we have a lot of different jobs. And then you also can work in the facilities, of course, if you want to work in the, they're not at full force since Corona, but if you want to work at a cafe on campus or something like that, that's also possible. Thank you both so much for all the information. Um, we still have a couple of questions. Uh, participant is asking if we can go over the admission process uh, once again. Yes. So the first thing that you do is once you've picked your program, you should check if you meet the admissions requirements. Um, if you think that you meet the admissions requirement, um, and as I mentioned, if it's a bachelor's program, you can take our e-check, um, which I put the link a bit earlier in the chat, echeck.ru.nl, and you can assess whether your degree um, would be admissible. Um, for master's program, we don't have for all master's programs the e-check yet. Um, so for some of them, you can try this. Otherwise you can send in your application. It will be assessed individually, um, but you can see exactly what you need. Every program will list um, all the requirements that they have and all the documents that you will need to submit. Um, once you've determined this, you go to studylink.nl. There will be links on our website and you apply for your program there. So you say which university you wanna to apply to, which program you wanna to apply to. Once you've done that, you will receive an email, if I'm correct. Um, uh, which you're logging to OSIRIS. So you can go to OSIRIS, which is our application system and submit your documents. So they will list exactly what you need to send, a copy of your diploma, a copy of your ID, your grades, um, all of the classes that you've taken. Um, most master's programs will ask for a motivation letter. I think all master's programs actually ask for a motivation letter. You might have to write a CV. Um, all those documents will be listed. You submit that. 
and then your document is assessed. It, it, your documents are assessed. It takes about three to four weeks, and then you get a reply, sometimes sooner, but generally about three to four weeks. Okay, everything's clear. Um, a participant is asking specifically for bachelor programs if the IELTS level required minimum is six or 6.5. Um, I think it's a six, although I can't say for sure that all programs would have the same, but I do believe, one second, let me just confirm. Sure. In the meantime, I would like to remind participants that we still have five minutes left for the Q&A session. So if you have any questions about the student life, if you have any question for Anna specifically, she will be happy to uh, answer your questions, of course. If you are curious about the, um, the academic offer, if you miss any information that you would like to uh, hear again, please let us know and we will do our best to um, go over uh, all the questions. And uh, in the meantime, I would also uh, like to ask you, Anna, what was the, um, you know, the peculiarity that made you enroll to Radboud? So why Radboud out of all universities? Um, I think because actually Radboud offered pre-master's program because my background is political science and they wanted to change it more to management and business. So I wasn't directly admittable to a master's so there was just an option to take an extra year so yeah, why not that's great and do you have any plans to stay in the netherlands do you want to continue your studies at radboud um my plans for now are to continue the studies for a year and then probably i will stay here i actually started lear learning dutch actually at radboud with the free courses they offer so yeah, I don't know. It's a lot of uncertainty. <laughs> but yeah, the next year, I'm, I'm going to stay here for sure. But that's of a good course. thing to, to bridge into actually students who, who graduate with a degree here. Um, they get to have an orientation year. Um, so you get a visa for one year um, where you can look for a job, uh, which is really nice and attractive for international students. So if Anna wants to stay, yeah. stick around and see if the Netherlands is for her, then she can do that for about a year. And and if you get a job within that year, then uh, your your work would apply for your work permit for you after a year. Yeah. That sounds great. And in the meantime, we have one more question in the chat. Um, Sophia is asking, what about the grants for non-EU uh, students? Are more important uh, outclasses activities or studying results to qualify for those grants? Um, generally, they are based on your uh, merit and um, depends on the grant. Most of our grants from Radboud University are based on academic merit. So, um, of course, uh, you have to think that you are competing with all the other students who apply for that scholarship. So. Um, it's not on a case for case basis, but it's seen as a as a whole package. So um, the your study results will be the most important thing, not not your uh, curricular extracurriculars. Yeah. Thank you so much, Stephanie. We have one last question in the Q and A box. A participant is asking, what is the average duration of a master's program? One year. Most masters are one year, unless you're doing a research masters, um, that's two years. Um, I think at the science faculty, all masters are one year. I mean, two years. Uh, if you do a pre-masters like Anna, then you do one year pre-masters and then a year of your masters. Okay, that sounds great. So we still have a couple of minutes left. So if any of the participants that have stuck with us till the end have any more questions, this would be the time to, to ask them. In the meantime, I would like to thank Stephanie and Anna very much for their presence here tonight and, and for taking the time to answer all the questions and giving us all the insight about Radboud. Um, while we are waiting for our last questions, I would like to uh, ask Anna if uh, she has had the occasion to do any uh, group work so far at Radboud and what was it like? Oh, actually, I think we do a lot of group work and group assignments, especially compared to my previous university. I think most of the assignments are actually by group work. Yeah, I don't remember actually an individual assignment I had to do. 
to be honest. <laughs> but that's maybe just because of uh, the management um, faculty, I don't know. So how do you find uh, yourself de dealing with the deadlines, with exam sessions? How do those work? Um, I feel pretty okay with everything. Um, I don't know, the deadlines, they are actually, they are strict. If you miss one, of course, that's it. <laughs> uh, the exams are, I know that maybe about 30% of uh, the students don't pass the exam. So we actually have to prepare for it. And you have to do a lot of stuff during like the, the block to pass the exam. So you, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest leaving, you know, studying for it for the last moment. Huh. But if you, if you know some time management skills, I and mean, if you can do it, like, I think it's going to be okay. Of course, I think that's always the case in any university and any degree. Um, so we don't have any more questions and our time has run out, unfortunately. But uh, I do want to thank all of you again for being here with us tonight and for sticking with us till the end. And thank you so much, Anna and Stephanie, for your presence here tonight. It has been my pleasure to moderate this webinar with Radboud University. And I want to remind all participants that you will get a recording uh, of the events a couple of days um, afterwards. So thank you once again, everyone. And I hope that all of you will stay safe. And I hope to see you uh, again soon uh, for the next event with Radboud. Thank you, Avinia. Thank you. It was really yeah. nice uh, to have this uh, webinar. And I was really happy with all the questions that came in. And uh, do not hesitate to contact us if you guys have any further questions that you want to ask. Absolutely. Thank you once again so much. And I wish you a nice day or evening according to where you are connected from. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.